Hello there, my fellow space witches, and welcome to another video on Dune lore. In the previous episode, I tried to introduce one of the most important factions in the Dune universe, in the form of the Bene Gesserit. I also asked if you folks think it's a good idea to stick to one topic instead of jumping around topics. So while I am probably not gonna make four or five videos on the Bene Gesserit in a row, at least for today, I am gonna keep on them. And since last time we talked about their ancient history, today we're gonna talk about a continuation of that history. Before I begin though, I would kindly ask you to watch until the end and comment if you want, since those aspects kinda do help out with the YouTube algorithm. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Bene Gesserit were active during the so-called Exploration Period, Voiceer notes, and by the time of colonization they had covertly taken control of programming the seeding machines. Both voices Mora and Sierre give information increasing the understanding of how the Imperium was populated. But in the same period, disputes were raging over the basic purpose of the Sisterhood. For example, voice Glenna is very caustic in her comments about the primitive breeders and their desire for a male savior. As a spokesperson for her northern unit, she utterly disdains the notion of a dominant male power, and starts considering the premise of universal consciousness as an unsophisticated myth. For her, breeding for political and economic power should be the Order's main goal. But at the same time, Western philosopher voice Dorens says, and I quote, There are too many race memories and too many holocausts in our history for any one sane person to assimilate. A southern voice, however, disagrees with both. This was voice Sadina, arguing that the newer technocrats are short-sighted, because of their separation from nature and because of their lust for machines rather than respect for ecology. She calls the Northern and Western sisters as water-fat and machine-lazy, asserting that they had lost their humanity and want to breed with the machines instead. For her, a male savior was still the main goal. The voices continue arguing well into the age of the machine. A point on comment is made by Voice Sedilius, and I quote, We strive for one who ends the strife. But in our striving, we work for that which will work against us. Only by not knowing where we can go can we advance. When we have found our future, we will be embedded in time as a fly is in amber. Other voices, though, speak disparagingly of voice Sedilius, calling her an unheard non-breeder. Although the sisterhood became quite dependent on thought machines, one branch remained devoted to mnemonic records, preserving the Summa throughout the Butlerian Jihad and beyond. Now, these thought machines, if it sounds confusing, are pretty much examples of computers slash AI from this universe. Other ancient volumes like the Azar Book or the Panoplia Propheticus were likely protected in the same way. An author called R.M. Triak notes that the voices from this period consistently refer to Wallach 9 as the Mother World, as if that planet had always been dominated by only the Bene Gesserit. Voice Sabatha, from a period well into the colonization era, reports that the Sisterhood did use thought machines to program an early missionary group sent to newly inhabited planets as cultural ecologists, but whose real purpose was to implant protective myths for future breeders, and these were known as the Missionaria Protectiva. Throughout the period, the Sisterhood continued dominating the programming for colonization, carefully establishing both breeding charts and programs, although it tried with mixed success to retain a public image as only a religious teaching order. The noted cultural ecologist Corijos Maliarono theorizes that the Bene Gesserit did recognize the relationship between ecology and social vitality thus choosing positive, although varied, ecological settings for the breeders. From her work with the Voices tapes, Maliarono surmises that offshoots of southern Terran cultures were particularly well situated on semi-arid and arid worlds, being historically compatible with the harsh climates, 
and productive of hardy new cultures. She finds evidence that the Zensuni wanderers and their own descendants, the Fremen, inhabiting worlds drawing on their own socio-ecological heritages, produce particularly vital breeding groups. Vital enough even to be the breeders of the Kwisatz Haderach eventually. Malyarana also argues that temperate worlds produced more sophisticated but less hardy breeders, with the Atreides being an exception rather than the rule. From the information in the Rockus Horde, authenticating the voice commentaries, we are also certain that the Bene Gesserit known as Jehane Butler was the instigator and early leader of the Butlerian Jihad. Voice Maharini gives information about the culture and the Bene Gesserit activities just prior to the Jihad. One dominant pseudo-religious belief which developed during the early exploration period was that the powerful anima, a feminine element governing intuitive understanding, was present in all human psyches. This belief was actually a distortion of an early Bene Gesserit mother goddess ideology, which in the meantime had been submerged in a scientific discipline known as psychology. With space exploration, humans venturing into the heavens of the gods, mythic beliefs were challenged by human technology. This caused the conflict which the Bene Gesserit missionaries used to their advantage, as they promoted intuitive reasoning to counter strictly database technological reasoning. This conflict between the rational and the intuitive continued well into the colonization period. Voice Maharini points out that as economic and political factions united in an inter-world trade federation, the technocrats gained control dominating the less economically important humanistic factions. Because the thought machines controlled the economies of the new worlds, the people of these worlds became very dependent on so-called machine thought, which was objective, non-emotional, and non-intuitive behavior. The Bene Gesserit likewise became highly dependent on machines, teaching rational thought in its own educational institutions and limiting its intuitive work only to the ideologist seeding myths on new worlds. It was also during this period that the Bene Gesserit creed of linked rationality was adopted, and I quote, Before us all methods of learning were tainted by instinct. We learned how to learn. Before us, instinct-ridden researchers possessed a limited attention span, often no longer than just one lifetime. Projects stretching across 50 or more lifetimes never occurred to them. It was only when the mother house realized that machines were decreasing human control, breeding humans into non-intelligent work animals, and systematically aborting any Bene Gesserit breeder, did they finally plan a revolt. It was now that the Order added their famous first lesson to the training program, which was, and I quote, humans must never submit to animals. This pretty much said that the machine-bred humans had to be eliminated along with the machines. The chapter house on Comos became the center for planning, being one of the few planets not yet controlled by the machines. But it was the abortion of a daughter of a woman named Jehane Butler that sparked the actual revolt. Throughout the Jihad, the Bene Gesserit were preserved by the geographical locations of its mother house and chapter houses, and by its public association with religion, education, and humanism. Wallach 9, being a neutral planet, became a refuge for humanist intellectuals, most of whom had been trained in Bene Gesserit institutions anyway. The Summa was thus preserved, the breeding record safe in mnemonic holders and in the ancient bound volumes of the archives. At this stage, the Sisterhood also abolished its own experiments with artificial insemination declaring that, and I quote, For the sisterhood, mating mingles more than just sperm and ovum. We wish to breed and capture psyches, an accomplishment possible only by human-to-human -human interaction. The Summa shows that the Bene Gesserit continued their breeding program even after the Jihad. Through planned marriage and selective concubinage, and they were soon controlling the breeding lines of all the major and minor houses which were developing in the Imperium. In the post-Jihad era, the reorganization of the order turned it into a publicly acknowledged influential faction. This reorganization made public the primary ranks of the order, 
but the sisterhood also continued using its hidden rank as required. Some of the more important chapter houses became well-known empire research institutions. But the political power of the Bene Gesserit in this new public role did not come from its own educational institutions as much as it did from its ideology of humans first. The sisterhood gained access to political centers by serving as so-called truth-sayers. During the machine era, leaders were totally dependent on so-called lie detectors to determine veracity in any kind of negotiation. But with the loss of these machines, and as voice Clarice adds, with no reestablishment of human trust, the Bene Gesserit truth-saying training made the sisterhood a necessary part of all major and minor political and economic meetings. Now they were employed in the service of every major house, and later they also became involved with the Spacing Guild. As voice Clarice notes, there were few secrets from the Bene Gesserit. She also adds that the order made public its Gom Jabbar test, as a means of ensuring that no machine-bred animals were allowed to masquerade as a human. The public did stay hostile to machine-breds for centuries afterwards, a condition that allowed the sisterhood a lot more freedom to test its own breeding line for sensitivity and for the Kwisatz Haderach potential. Later voices also claimed that the Bene Gesserit was known in the Imperium as a religious and teaching order. Women simply devoted to truth and virtue, whose mission was to lead society out of the Holocaust following the Machine Era and into a new era based on the combined powers of intellect and intuition. Sometime in the second Imperial Millennium, the Sisterhood added an amendment to its creed, and I quote, Reserve an attitude of distrust for anything that comes in the guise of logic. This addition did come partly in response to machine thought but also as a counter to a new, competitive teaching order known as the Mentats. These guys wanted to replace machine thought with perfect human logic. While the sisters did employ many of the same analytical methods as the Mentats, the order argued that the universe could not be completely or accurately understood via isolated objective analysis alone. Such analysis was useful in individual events, but synthesis was only gained via intuitive interpretation. Throughout this period, though, the voices agreed that although the overt image of the order was that of service, the actual objective of their educational and breeding programs was to gain control of the power base of the empire. The ancient desire for a humanity united in an active male consciousness apparently had been forgotten submerged again in a single-minded objective of breeding the Kwisatz Haderach, who could actually rule the Empire. As a scholar of the House of Ix said early in the God Emperor's reign, the problem of getting what one wants comes in discovering too late what one has really asked for. In Commentaries to the Voices, Our Lady and Mother Ganima discusses the irony that both the jihads in our history were begun by the Bene Gesserit, but she also points out the differences between them. Jehane Butler began with a well-thought-out purpose, and with the full support of the Order, but Lady Jessica, Our Lady's own grandmother, deviated from the Order's plan, disrupted its purpose, and worked against her own Reverend Mother. Leto II, the son of Paul Atreides, refused to acknowledge his connections with an Order he so clearly detested. And Our Lady adds that her discovery was further hindered by the suppression of Mohayim's voice by the voices of both Jessica and Paul. When Lady Jessica produced a male rather than the prescribed female child, the order discounted the birth, even though Jessica's daughter would have been bred to produce the Kwisatz Haderach. More importantly, when Mohayim tested Paul Atreides with the Gamjabar, discovering an unusual degree of power in him, she kept the test result a secret giving the sisterhood no warning that a potential Kwisatz Haderach was already among them. However, for more story on Paul Atreides, we would have to reserve at least another couple of videos sometime in the future. Either way, this is where the history and the shenanigans of the Bene Gesserit end for today. There is obviously still a lot more to be said about them, including their organization, training, and some quite unnatural abilities. 
but those are gonna be topics for future videos nevertheless. At the very least, I hope that after two videos focused mainly on their history, you have at least some idea about who these ladies are and what they wanted. I have referenced in this video the quite important event known as the Butlerian Jihad as well, and I don't want you to think that this overview was all there was to it. In fact, one of the questions I would like to ask you today is, would you like to learn more about the Jihad? And for those of you who are already knowledgeable about Dune, do you think I should make the Butlerian Jihad a priority? If not, I can keep talking about the Bene Gesserit, or maybe get started on the Guild. I do welcome any and all questions, or thoughts, or suggestions of yours in the comments below. I also thank you for watching, and if you want me to keep doing Dune videos, please try to support them. You can do that by watching to the end, by liking, by commenting, and by subscribing and sharing. Until the next time, do have a healthy and awesome day, and may the blessings of Shai Hulud be upon you.